Hello everybody, this is a short five minute-ish explainer of the hybrid arrangements for the Social Legal Studies Association Conference in York uh, in a few weeks time, just to go alongside those joining instructions that we've just sent out. There's a few things I want to cover briefly in this video. Uh, the first is just how to access the program and how the Zoom links are going to be handled within the program for those who are joining us remotely. How it's going to work for presenters, so both those presenters in the room face to face and also for those presenting online and also how it's going to work for the Q&A or discussion chunk after the presentations, after the papers and how we're going to facilitate that both for those in the room and for those who are joining us online. Our key organising principles for this really was to try and keep things as simple as we possibly can. Um, all of the online stuff, all of the online access is being done through the Zoom platform. Uh, there'll also be a conference assistant in each of the rooms across all of the different sessions. So there'll be somebody to ask if there's any uh, questions or to help use the kit if that's needed. And also, if you could please keep an eye on your inbox in the run-up to the conference. We're going to be providing an additional one sider for those presenting and for those chairing as well um, and also providing information on how to access the program once we password protect it. So just turning to that program we've used Oxford Abstracts this year for handling the online program. There'll also be a hard copy program for those who are attending face to face. Obviously for those online they'll need to use the online program to access the Zoom links. Hopefully if you've had a chance to have a look at this already, you may have had a bit of a play around. Effectively all of the sessions have been added on, they all exist in parallel with each other on the default view, but you can filter down to particular streams and themes using those different categories, the drop downs just at the top of the menu. And if you're elsewhere, if you're not in the GMT time zone, you can change the time zone of the sessions to fit wherever you're at. You'll see as well there's a search bar in the top right hand corner where you can plug any information so be it authors or topics or whatever else and there's also some pages on the left hand side some menu pages which allow you to navigate to particular authors or particular papers if you prefer browsing that way. Once you click on an individual session this is the kind of pop-up that you get and that lists the papers in that particular session and if you click on those boxes with the papers that will take you to the abstracts. When the Zoom links have been added to the program, they'll also appear in these little pop-up boxes. And to join the session, you simply click that button, which will be called uh, join the session here, uh, once the Zoom links have been added to the program. Now we're hoping teething problems will be as limited as they possibly can be. Um, but if there are any problems with links uh, over the course of the program, do please get in contact with us at the SSA email address or by calling us on 01904325747. Uh, the conference assistants uh, will be manning the program and updating links as and when they're needed, um, but that's how you can contact us if there's any issues on the day. The program is currently public, but as I say, it will turn to a passcode only program when the Zoom links are added to help keep those Zoom links secure. We'll be providing that email, uh, providing the passcode information about a week or so ahead of the conference. So do please keep tabs on your inbox for them. So turning to how it works for those actually presenting, whether you're in the room or presenting remotely, uh, to give you sort of a standard conference room just on the left hand side of the screen, for face to face presenters, effectively you'll just present as normal, the only exception being that you'll have to share your screen if you're using a PowerPoint so Zoom attendees can see your PowerPoint presentation. There'll be a conference assistant and a webcam on a tripod in the room and that webcam can be moved around as and when it's needed. For online presenters, uh, you'll also present live and the only difference will be that again you have to share your screen if you're using a PowerPoint presentation so that comes up on the screen for those who are physically in the room and for other Zoom presenters. Uh, there's no pre-recording of presentations this year, everyone's being asked to present live. There's no need to send us your PowerPoints in advance but it is helpful if you're presenting face to face to arrive at your session a little bit early to load those up in advance. Ideally they should be brought on a USB memory stick if at all possible just to make it a bit easier than logging into email and downloading them um, on the uh, PCs in the room. In terms of how it's going to work for the Q&As for the question and answer sessions or any other form of discussion uh, for different session formats Effectively the principle is to ask a question you raise your physical or Zoom hand and you can then be called on uh, by the chair. Uh, Zoom chat will be turned off across all of the sessions so effectively the principle is you just raise your hand 
and then you're called upon to speak in a particular order and if you're on Zoom you will mute and speak. We've decided against the chat partly to keep things relatively simple but also to try and reduce the ask of the chairs. I think trying to manage a chat and a physical in-room discussion is a bit too much for people to be handling. For slightly larger rooms we do have streams we're expecting a lot more in the way of physical attendance at. Um, you may be asked in some of our lecture theatre type setups to instead move to a table that has a microphone on it if you're asking a question face to face so you can be heard or perhaps in certain rooms as well it may be that the session chair has to relay your question to you if you're at the back of the room so it can be heard by those in Zoom. If you're in one of those rooms that's slightly larger um, where we have to use this sort of setup the conference assistant who's there will be able to explain that to you in the session. So that's everything we wanted to cover in the context of this video. We wanted to provide just a brief indication about how the hybrid arrangements are going to work. If you do have any questions in advance, do please contact us on the conference email address. We've got a few of us manning the queries in there now. Uh, and as I say, we'll be in touch again in the run-up with just a little bit more information. So a quick one-sider on sharing your screen for those on Zoom, um, for those who are presenting or chairing sessions. Brilliant. Thank you very much for listening.